Today, we're going to demonstrate class 1 amalgam restoration. For our patient today, we have Phantom. One day while he was eating, he felt pain in his lower right tooth. He decided to make an appointment at the dental clinic next to his house to have his teeth checked out. His dentist used a mouth mirror and an explorer to locate caries in his teeth. During clinical examination, class 1 caries were found on tooth number 46. So let's get started with the procedure. The equipment we're going to need for the rubber dam are rubber dam, rubber dam puncher, a clamp, rubber dam forceps, dental floss, a wedge to stabilize the rubber dam, rubber dam frame, plastic filling instrument, and finally, napkin. For infection control, we're going to need a gown, a face mask, a face shield, and gloves. The burr we're going to use is the 330 burr, also known as the pear-shaped. We are going to insert it into the high-speed handpiece. After that, we're going to locate the caries. As we said before, class 1 occlusal caries were found on tooth number 46. Now let's start drilling. Make sure that the burr is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Make sure that the buccal and lingual walls converge slightly for tension form while the mesial and distal are straight or divergent. Also remember to keep the pulpal floor flat and perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. The depth of the cavity should be from 1.5 to 2 millimeters to be able to resist fracture. As for the width of the cavity, the smallest condenser should be able to fit in without getting stuck. If it does get stuck, you're going to have to widen the cavity. After we're finished with the preparation, we're going to move on to the amalgam instruments. We're going to need amalgam carrier, a condenser, a pre-carved burnisher, a haul and back, a discoid cleoid carver, a post-carved burnisher, and finally an explorer. Of course, we're going to need amalgam in a machine that mixes amalgam called an amalgamator. We're going to put the amalgam capsules into the amalgamator for 6 seconds or according to manufacturer instructions. After 6 seconds, remove the amalgam capsule. Now we're ready to pack the amalgam into the preparation. Using an amalgam carrier, place the amalgam into the cavity. Remember to place the amalgam in increments. Between each increment, make sure to condense the amalgam into the cavity to adapt it into the walls. Next is pre-carved burnishing. Using a burnisher, spread the amalgam from the center of the tooth outward. It will help remove excess mercury and also adapt amalgam at the margins. After burnishing has been done, the next step is carving. Using a hollow back carver, Carve the amalgam. Make sure to follow the normal occlusal anatomy. You can also use a cleoid discoid carver to remove excess amalgam found on tooth surface. After that is post-carved burnishing. Using an anatomical burnisher, follow the normal occlusal anatomy. This will help us give us a smooth surface. Finishing and polishing of amalgam can be done, but after setting, which is 24 hours. So, for finishing, we're going to use finishing burrs following the normal occlusal anatomy. As for polishing, we're going to start off with brownies and then greenies. And the aim of finishing and polishing is to remove the voids on the surface of the restoration and therefore decrease plaque accumulation. And finally, there you have it, class 1 amalgam restoration. Also, don't forget to dispose the amalgam in the right container. We have Phantom's approval and thank you all for watching.